out of all the questions you've been asked all this time here, which is the one you hate the most as far as the book is concerned? Uh, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a good question too. No one's asked me that. What's the one I hate the most? Like answering the most, I'm sure you've been asked. Uh, this you know, so, it, so no one's asked me this question here, but like, where did you get the idea for the book? That's the one I hate the most. But no one's asked me that actually. That's I hadn't thought about that. So, but if anybody did, that's the one you. That's would the hate. one I hate the most. Okay, but, but why? People want to. I, I don't know how to answer that. Like you know, it's like yeah. people act like you know these things take time. It's not just one idea. It's like an amalgam of. A ton yeah. of ideas. So. Okay. So how long did it take you to come up with the idea? Were you? It took years. I mean, it took me five years to write the book. Okay. Yeah. So, but you must have sort of thought of it, like. What oh I yeah, yeah, for a long time. But it's like in like things I've been thinking about for a long time. So I had the the idea for the Hominy character okay. for a long time. Uh, I've been thinking about that neighborhood. Yeah, not Dickens necessarily, but there's like a place in LA that's inspi that inspired that. Okay. And so I have a friend who teaches there. My sister teaches there, and I have a friend who also works in the school system there. All right. And so I've been thinking about that place for a long time because it's so weird with their animals and all this other kind of stuff. Uh, and the other thing, this this notion of segregation was something else I'd been thinking about for a long time. All right. But when I thought of Hominy, I was like, oh, I love this character. And so it's like, okay, and he was, that, that was the thing where I was like, okay, I, had to, I have a character, I, I need to find a story somehow. Yeah. And, uh, and just uh, over a long time. I mean, these are things in my head, and I don't know when they come together, but at some level they come together. So did you, like, um, was there this any one moment when you figured out that it's kind of coming together, I need to write this down? So, I mean, I, I'm writing down things all the time, all right. and I just kind of know that they go in a book. For this book, not so much. Like usually, I have a ton of notes. That I, this one, I have some notes, but not a ton. The notes came after I started writing. That's when I started doing all the re research. Okay. And uh, but there was a. I had all this these ideas. I just was like yeah, I don't know where this starts. I just didn't know what it was. But I was at a party in California, and it was hosted by two lawyers, husband and wife. Okay. And they started arguing about some case that was in court and they both were trial lawyers and I went the Supreme Court and that's then where it's going to start. That, that and that really was when everything yeah. came together okay. you know I mean it's really that was the moment okay. I was like dang that's where it starts because I was figuring out a way of I had an idea where I wanted to go but I didn't really know how to get into the story Bring it about. but like when I thought of that and then I thought about you know, the impact of the story, the scope of the story, because it starts in the Supreme Court, which has this symbolism at, yeah. you know, at a minimum level, yeah. you know. So, so, yeah, that's when it started. Okay, so as a writer, I mean, after all these books, uh, is, do you treat, like, I mean, of course you treat each book differently, but is your writing the way you write or you, the way you sort of work at it, is it different? I don't think so. For everything? Are, are you one of those writers who make stuff like, in the morning and works occasionally and yeah sometimes okay. I don't have like a set schedule or anything I try, I try to write when the mood hits me but I try to make sure that the mood's always hitting me so yeah. Uh, but yeah occasionally I'll wake up at four in the morning usually as I get older it has to be quieter yeah didn't used to always be like that okay. I used so, to be able to tune stuff out but I, I'm not as good as that so you're not like late night no I can't be I, I'm a, it's I live in New York. New York gets loud. I'm just more sensitive to the noise now. It didn't used to be, but so mornings, late nights, early mornings. It's harder for me to write during the day than it used yeah, to be. But that's usually the case with most things. Is it? But because there's so much noise and there's so much happening throughout the day, you can't really sort of isolate yourself and sit down and really think. Maybe Delhi and New York are like that a little bit in common. Yeah, no, because usually here we will have work and we'll have all of that. So if anybody, even if like, even if I'm working on, say, my thesis, I can't work during the day. I have to do it either at night, and yeah. I'm not a morning person, so I cannot wake up. So it's not going to happen. I have to do it at night. Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm the, probably the same, actually. Yeah, so that's kind of how it is. No, because there's so many authors who say, oh, I wake up at 4 in the morning, and I write till 8, and then... Oh, they do days. that? Oh, no. Yeah, I'm just like, oh, my God, I can never do that. I, I, I don't think I can. Uh, I, uh, when I wake up at 4 in the morning, it's because I, I don't want to write, but I'm like, ah... 
that idea is too good. I gotta. I, I think yeah. I figured something out. So and I, I just I try you not to. Yeah, I just kind of have to do it. it. And sometimes it takes till eight in the morning to get to figure it out. Okay. But you know, but I'm not one of those people who just wakes up then and then starts writing. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah. And if I start at four in the morning, it's just because I've been up till four in the morning. So. Oh, okay. So that means you haven't slept the entire night. Yeah, sometimes. And, yeah. And you just yeah. started writing. Well, yeah. that's, that's that's one way. To do it. But um. Why, I mean, just a question, five years for this book, do you, I mean, does, do you really need that long? <laughs> yeah, apparently so. I hope so. Yeah, okay. So, um, what was the hardest part about writing this book? That's a good question. Um, like, I try to be ignorant, but uh, I, I guess, you know, at some points I would, you know, get aware of what I was doing and go, oh, I don't know how people are going to take this, you know. Yeah. Uh, and so sometimes it would be hard to just let go and just not worry about it, you know. Yeah. And I think it was, I say it's hard, but it wasn't that hard because you know, I, I felt like I was on to something. So in a weird way, that made it easier, you okay. know. Um, but every, occasionally I'd be like, yeah, what the hell am I doing here, <laughs> you know. But, you know, I, that would go away pretty quickly, you okay. know. So the hard part is the stuff that's always hard, which is writing and trying to, you know, convey these thoughts onto the page and have fun doing it and yeah. trying to be original, so, all that so, stuff. So do you like, you, you've thought of it in some way and you like written it down and then changed it like some a million times by the time you finally decided that, okay, this, this sentence works Yeah. and this doesn't. So that happens to you. Oh well. yeah, of course, you know, I, you know, I try to not to interrupt my rhythm too much, but mm -hmm. I'm slow, so, uh, but you know, I'm, I'm just constantly going back and forth, going back. It's hard for me to move forward if I'm not, Okay, pretty okay. sad more than okay actually yeah. you okay. know it's hard for me to move forward All right. you know sometimes that's sentence by sentence or word by word sometimes that's chunk by chunk you know mm -hmm. but it's hard for me to really move forward like right. I'm not a person who can write the end or write something in the middle and fill in this I can't but do is that. it possible to sort of write the end I think some then, people can do that yeah but doesn't that sort of um, I don't know change the way the story should be flowing because you kind of already know where you're ending and yeah, not everybody knows where they're ending some people like just starting they know where they're starting they like trying to figure out where they end up. and it's different for everybody I think so I guess yeah okay so uh, when I was reading this book I mean um, I like the way you sort of you know, the way the sentences it just goes on it's like a conversation and it's I, I don't know what's a diary so I sat through your session and also the press but I don't know what satire, but it was supreme. Wait, sarcastic. you don't know what, what? No, I don't know about it, like, I don't want to call it a satire. Oh, satire, okay. Yeah, I don't. But it was supremely sarcastic, and I love that. Oh, okay. And so yeah. I'm just wondering... Um, sarcastic is a good word. I have no problem with that word yeah, at all. Yeah, thanks, because you, you did have a problem with the word satire. I do, I do. Yeah, so, uh, but do you think that uh, a lot of people say that uh, sarcasm comes out from this place of anger somewhere? I don't know. I don't know if it has to be anger necessarily. It's uh, it could be frustration. Yeah. It could like, be a weird sense of irony. It doesn't have to be anger. I don't no, think. No, I you mean know. people say that. I'm not saying that. Uh, that's what we believe. Uh, I'm just wondering what your opinion is. That where you think this the sense of sarcasm comes from? Which sort yeah, of that's a, right. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I don't know where it comes from. This is how I am, I guess. Okay. I don't. That, that, that's fine. I haven't do. done the that's therapy fine. to know where no. that comes <laughs> from, but. Uh, <laughs> would you do a therapy to know where that comes no, from? No, I would not. Yeah. You, I, no, I don't want to know. I don't want to okay. know. Okay, so as long as it's working, it's good. Yeah, exactly. All right. Exactly. And um, so, also, do you think that often, uh, really, like you know, witty sarcasm is somehow always often mistaken as satire? Like you know, you're purposely trying to do this, but then hey, I'm not really purposely trying to do this. I actually talk like that. Well, I don't right. talk like this. Do I talk the way no, I write? No, you don't. Which is, which is, I know. But, but I understand that you know you will be thinking in a certain way because you talk like that in your head, but you don't talk like that aloud. Well, I talk like that when I'm writing. You know, I'm trying to create something original, something yeah. artful. But then why wouldn't you talk like that? Because that's well, some people talk like how they write. Yeah. So I have a friend who I can't read yeah. if I'm writing because he's a very good writer. But he, to me, he writes a lot like how he talks. Okay. And so when I read him, I can't get his voice out of my head. So, so that's a problem. Yeah, so he's written some books that I haven't, it took me, I didn't read them for years. And I wanted to read them, but I was like, I know I can't read him. Because you keep hearing Cause I, Because I hear his yeah. voice. I don't want to hear yeah, that. Yeah, I think we all, I, people have that. They have these markers, like conversational markers that somehow just get into the writing yeah. and it just stays there. So yeah. if you know them, you can't get it out of Yeah, head. yeah. And um, 
Okay, so question about writing. Sure. When did you start writing? Uh, uh, school. Yeah, school. nah, nah. I mean, I, I was uh, you know, I'd gone to college, and then I was getting my doctorate in psychology. You got a doctorate in psychology. I don't have a doctorate. Oh, you don't have. It. I was in the middle of getting my doctorate. Okay, I have two. You really? Yeah. What kind of psych? Uh, literature. Not not science. I'm doing it in literature. Oh, okay. From this college in uh, Delhi, J JNU, Jawaharlal Nehru oh, okay. University. So I'm doing it from there. Even I'm in the middle of it and also yeah. not in it yet. But so I was three years in and probably had a couple more years to go and I just realized I didn't want to do it. Okay. And during this time, I mean, I've always been a, a reader. But I was starting to write differently, and I kind of realized how much I enjoyed writing. I just hadn't realized it before. Okay. And I had written a couple things, and the people in class had really responded to it. And it made me feel really good somehow. Yeah. And the professor had called me out. And was, I don't know. Anyways. But was this stuff about psychology? And this was st psych stuff. Okay. And, uh, Is that why you don't want to go for therapy? Because you don't want a subject to tell the rest of your class. No, nah, I don't think so. It's, uh, it's, I don't think those two things have to go together. Okay. It's just, just a fear of what I'm going to learn about myself, I think. All right. But, uh, and then I was, you know, reading differently somehow in my head, going to poetry readings and stuff, and I just realized, so I must have been about 24, 25 when I started writing. Okay. And I just moved to New York. All I knew how to do was go to school, so I went to school to learn how to write, supposedly. And uh, mm -hmm. so I was about 24, 25, I guess, when okay. I started writing. And so you attended poetry session, so why choose prose and not poetry? Yeah, I mean, poetry is what I wanted to do at the time, okay. you know, it's what spoke to me. Uh, and I, and so maybe a little bit had to do with my reticence about just my, like a fear of the... Uh, just the volume of this, you know? Yeah. I wasn't sure about the heft. But poetry is just as heavy. Yeah. But um, psychically, it's just as heavy. Uh, so I don't know. For some reason, I was I, there was something about poetry that was really speaking to me. I'm not sure exactly what it was. Because I didn't, when I was younger, I didn't read much poetry at all. But as I got older, I just started reading a lot. Anyways. So I just, it was just where I was. And, you know, I was in the right place. And so I wrote and I did poetry. Yeah, for like five years or so, maybe I wrote okay. poetry. And then my poems were getting longer and longer. Yeah. And at some point, I had the idea for my first novel. Okay. And then so, for about seven years maybe, maybe I was writing poetry for about seven years, I just was taking, the, taking these notes and somebody asked me to write an essay, which I had never had done since college. Right? Yeah. And then so somebody asked me to write an essay, and I wrote an essay about me and my friends just buying some beer. But it was like a big, kind of long-winded okay. thing. It was about like our generation. And in writing that essay, it hit me how I wanted to write the novel. Yeah. So did, did any of that essay have a, get into any of your novels? That's a good question. Yeah, me. Some of it's in this book, actually, okay. if I think about it. All right. So part of, and part of that essay was this question of like what blackness is. And so I had I made this weird scale of these columns. Okay. I can't remember exactly. All right. But so, but it was this funny kind of things, and so some of that's in there. In but the, the stuff that's in everything is the psychology and the poetry is yeah. in everything. Yeah, like those experiments the father does. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of interesting. Yeah. So, um, okay. Um, favorite books. Right now. Oh, right now. I'm reading this G.K. Chesterton book that I really like, The Napoleon of Nottingham Hill, All right. that I like. Uh, a friend of mine gave it to me. I am, I'm really loving the book. It's really short, and I'm you know, mm. halfway through it, I guess. Okay. Yeah. All right. I, um, question not to do with your writing so much. What do you think the problem is with this generation? <laughs> I have no idea. No, I mean, not, not politically, <laughs> but just as, you know. What do you think the problem is with this generation? Everything. What's like, what? Uh, I don't know. Also, I hate the word millennial. I yeah. hate it. But I. Th th there you made the satire face that I make with the millennial. Yeah, you made the it's, same it's, satire I, face. I think um, it's a sort of you know, classifying and just putting everybody in the same box. And you can't put everybody in the same box. 
and you, you know you say that oh they are privileged and they don't know exactly what they're doing and since they don't know they are not even doing the stuff that they know correctly okay something like that yeah. and because there were all these videos that keep doing rounds on social media about what's the problem with the millennials and we were like everybody's seen it and everybody knows what the problem is but nobody's fixing it apparently well, what's the problem though well this one guy I, I don't remember his name he said that um it's because of our because our parents have been telling us that we can be anybody we want and we can get anything that we want. Uh -huh. So we grew up with a sense of privilege, uh -huh. and uh, so therefore, uh, when we get into a college where we don't get the grades we think we deserve, we just somehow let it be. Or if we don't get the promotion that we deserve, we are like we get um, sort of very negative about it instead of pushing for it so as we get it because we think that we deserve it anyway, and it should somehow just fall into our laps and. So that's the idea. That's one of the ideas, and how we waste our time on social media, and how uh. everything is a matter of an Instagram post or a tweet, or so. Therefore, we're not making real connections, and therefore we are not also making genuine relationships. So that's that's a summed up idea of what's wrong with the blend. So I'm just wondering. So of the people that you see now, I mean, yeah, I mean the only people I see are my students. So, yeah. uh, so what do you think the problem was with your students? I don't know. They seem exactly like how I was when I was their age. Okay. Actually, they're better off. I mean, they're uh, yeah, especially the ones that are like 22, 23, and they know what they want to do in life, and they're good at it. Do you think and they're, they're actually like, going to keep doing like? They, they're actually oh, I have no idea. It. I have no idea. I think. Well, I mean, the thing is, it's, well, you know, I'm, I teach writing, more or less, yeah. and writers write, so they'll either continue to write or they won't. Well, I mean, writing's hard for most people, yeah. so, I don't know, but, uh, it don't seem much different than I was, to be okay. honest, but, but, <laughs> you know. But great, because most people would be like, no, you know, we, we sort of knew, we had a focus, you kids just know stuff and then you don't know it. Like, I feel people told okay. me that when I was that age. I yeah, mean, because I, just, I was, uh, even, I, even if I knew what I wanted to do at 24, I don't want to do that anymore. Yeah, well, you're allowed to. Yeah, so, uh. What is like this one thing that you usually do tell your students? Oh, uh, I mean, I think somebody asked me that and I didn't give a very good answer. Not that I ever do, but I think I, I got this sort of from a, a coworker of mine. But I think one of the things is I try, I don't say this to them explicitly, but I try them to get to the point where they're really impressing themselves. You know, looking at their stuff and going, God damn, I did that. Yeah. You know, it's hard to get to that point, though. You know, for some people, they'll just go, oh, I did that. I'm great. Yeah. You know, but I mean, like, on another level, you know, uh, and to write with that focus and that kind of purpose, yeah. which has nothing to do with the story I want to hear or what your reason for being a writer is, but really about, fuck, look what I did. Yeah. You know what I mean? And just, because that's going to affect their engagement, you know, and so... I don't say that to them like that, you know. Yeah, if I start the class telling them they got to impress me, that's what I, how I yeah. start, you <laughs> that's know. Fair. But just to, you know, shake them up and cuz it's hard to, to sustain that energy mm -hmm. for a long time. You know, it's hard. Writing's hard. So, but that's a thing of maybe it's sort of selfish, but writing's selfish a little bit or yeah. one could argue that it is. So that's one thing that, you know, I don't say it, but it's something that I think can help all of them. And even yeah. if they go impressed and they go, ah, I hate it, just for that one second, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So do you think, um, I mean, there are, there are people who can just, you know, they're sort of born with this gift of being able to write really well. And some people eventually, maybe over the years after reading a lot of things and eventually arrive at it. Do you think it's, I mean, for other people somewhere in the middle of it, do you think it's possible to teach somebody how to write well? Oh, yeah, yeah. I think... I don't know if you're teaching someone how to write well, but you teach them, <coughs> you can help them develop a frame for, for how, what they want to say and how they want to say it, okay. you know, because, you know, the, the well part is subjective. Yeah. So one of the things I try to get them to concentrate on is the story that they want to tell, not so much the story that I want to hear, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so, because and it's a big world, you know, and so it's a part of, I mean, really, what the thing is that the students get better because they keep writing, yeah. you know, and they keep learning, they keep exploring, they keep experimenting, you know, and that's how you get better. I mean, the rest of it is, I don't know. I mean, I, I listen to them because I'm not in their position, but they feel or they want to believe whether it's true or not. Like they do this and they go to school 
and they feel like it just speeds up the process. Like oh. something that would take them five years yeah. to a point in their way of thinking, they get there quicker. I don't know if that's true or not. But that's the feeling. That but they that's have. the feeling some of them helps? have. I mean, I think it helps. I mean, it's nice to be around people that love literature, that talk, that learning, that are open to hearing you, that take the time to pay attention to what you're doing, yeah. that can give you some feedback. That's hard to find, yeah. you know, and so that part can help. I mean, that's how I got better, by people taking their time and asking me questions about, hey, so why did you do this? Yeah. You know, and I had to go, oh, yeah, well, why did I do that? And it just helped me start to develop a sense of purpose, a sense of... Um, you know, doing things for a reason, you know. Uh, and, like, I just, I learned how perceptive people are, you know. Like, you know, yeah. not, not everyone, but a lot of people are, yeah. you know. And uh, I just, I just, I learned to, to just, to be precise, you know, to be meticulous and to care about what I was doing, you know, to yeah. really care and that it's important to me and I need to treat it that way. And, yeah, I mean, I could, I don't, I'm speaking no, no, no. in, it, it, in uh, but in, so that was, you know, that's where I happened to learn that environment. Yeah. And I was lucky that I had, you know, had a, a wide range of teachers. I had teachers that told me to stop writing because I would never be any good at it. Yeah. And I had teachers that were like, no, you're doing something that no one else is doing. Yeah. People are going to learn to read you, which is, are two opposite ends, yeah. you know. And, but that kind of helped me just to slow down, not put so much pressure on myself but just to learn to to love learning how to write okay. you know and uh yeah alright so why did you do this like you said like I just happened you know oh. it's just stuff that I've been thinking about and stuff I've been avoiding and yeah it was just time for me to write another book oh and what's next any other yeah I don't know I have some vague ideas that All right. I haven't solved there yet there will be more notes and there will be yeah, I think so. Exactly. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. Yeah, yeah. that's sorry. the plan. We'll Definitely see. Going to be. I hope you're right. Yes. <laughs> Who knows? But though. I hope we're all right because we definitely want to. Ah, oh, thank you. And it's brilliant because uh, I don't know. I mean, more so with you sort of being here for the JLF or whatever. This is just, just everybody's reading it. So. Uh, so I mean. So which is yeah. great. So yeah. For that, you do definitely write another one. Okay, I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> okay.